you tell me I overshare, but everyone's friends here, but I won't overshare too much. But after the episode came out, I received Welcome back to another episode of Curious Conversations. It's another week. Happy Wednesday or Tuesday if you're watching on YouTube. Or whatever day you're listening to this. That's a that's a good actually, good, good, good. We do have a YouTube channel now. Good, 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 good. good, good. We have a YouTube channel and it comes out the Tuesday night, which is before it launches on Wednesday. Yes. And there was quite a bit of feedback on Solomon's episode on YouTube. And so if you enjoy content like Solomon's episode, like I know it quite, we got quite a few DMs. If you could please give us a little cheeky like, subscribe. It helps us grow and it helps us get guests like Solomon so we can give you guys more value. And that's all we want to do. Yeah, exactly. And I just want to read a little comment that we got from a fellow mum who follows me and she listened to the podcast. Um, she said, I've just listened to your podcast with Solomon in the sun with a coffee while the baby slept the whole time. Fuck. So simple, but so good. And so many fab takeaways, the script, the story we tell ourselves and the impact that it can have is massive. I've never named my anxiety or thought to have a relationship with it, but it makes so much sense to do so. So I think I'll call her Margaret. And I love this no nonsense approach. I have to think about it more and really make sense of it for me. Thank you so much for sharing. uh, To be honest, I've caught myself so many times since recording that episode with Solomon like oh that's just the other thing like voice in my head Mm -hmm. just trying to protect me but it's okay I've got this yeah so great app so we're back for our second solo just you and I yeah and I have got a sinus problem so I sound like a hole and we've tried to record this twice and I cannot stop coughing and I'm just like Tally I'm actually gonna hit you in the head (laughs) oh my god there you go on cue so this Great. is going to be fun to record because I am dying. And this is going to be super quick, girls. I'm going to I'm going to absolutely headbutt you. <laughs> You're going to headbutt me. All I'm thinking in my head is do not cough, do not cough, do not cough. Well, you're manifesting it though. I know. I know. Anyway, That's the whole thing. What happened in the week of pop culture and TikTok? No, we're going back to the, our first solo. Mm. Yeah. Because personally, my DMs blew up. Even I was getting text messages from my mum. What are you doing? What is a soulmate? Oh, what no. is all this? And I'm like, and there there were events after that episode came out. And you tell me I overshare, but everyone's friends here. But I won't overshare too much. But after the episode came out, I received or we received, I should say, because it went to the info email, a anonymous email from a girl just outlining some stuff and fair to say, since then I haven't spoken to any ex. It was a girl code email. That's all I can say. And she's like, if you've got any questions, write back. And I thought, you know what, she's a girl's girl. I don't know what made her reach out and write that email, but thank you to whoever you are. Um, I won't write back, <laughs> but There's no contact anymore. Done, deleted by contact has finished. So that's my update on my, um, take what you want from that email. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's my personal update since episode one. And I know quite a few have asked me. And, um, so that's it. Love X's that. are X's for a reason, right? Exactly. And they shouldn't come back into your life. No, that's it. Ever. Well, that's what I'm learning as well. But fair to say, last week was a lot. I had all of that ex drama. I probably had my best session personally with Solomon ever when it comes to relationships. And here we are now. Back for another week. But I want to go through some of the news that um, has been entering my TikTok feed. Can we just talk about Sky Wheatley? I saw this. So I love Sky Wheatley. I'm actually quite obsessed. I think she's quite a sweet girl. She does put her foot in it a lot in social media. For people that are like me, who don't know who Sky Wheatley is. So Sky Wheatley was on Big Brother quite a long time ago. I think maybe like the first few series, maybe. Mm. I don't know. And she is a influencer. Yep. 
quite a big influence in Australia. So beautiful, stunning. I've now watched a lot of TikToks and some interviews. I think she's got an addiction to plastic surgery. Um, Has she said that? Yeah. I think she's got like body dysphoria. Oh, I can never say this. Body. Slow down. I can't say it. Say it. Body dysphoria. What is, what is it called? Dysphoria. Yes. Thank you. Um, and obviously, so what she sees is not we, what we all see. Um, and she's got an addiction to like plastic surgery and stuff. And she went to Turkey. If You've probably all seen this on TikTok, but she went to Turkey to get fox eye surgery, which is... It's, they for, call it the Balahadid surgery. And for people who don't know what fox eye is? Balahadid surgery. So basically it's pulling back your skin to make like an elevated eye, like a fox eye. Yep. Um, and it's quite a common surgery, especially in Turkey. And like I said, it's called the Balahadid surgery. They Everyone wants to look like Balahadid. She's very like um, As you would, oh, you took the words right out yeah, of Yeah, snatched. Um, and... She got that done and I did see her post a like post, like she's still very swollen, don't get, like it's still swollen, but she posted a little TikTok and all I have to say is I am not a fan and I think she looked better before and I feel sad for her. I was, I feel sorry for people like this as well who go to the extent of changing their body and their face and their look so much. I want to know, are they scared of getting older? What motivates them to want to do these things? And we've had a couple of chats with friends that are quite high profile influencers and it's made me feel sad for them as well because they're like this pressure to remain a certain way. Yeah, look, don't get me wrong. I'm all for filler, Botox. I've had threading. I've had, like, I've had stuff done to my face, not plastic surgery or anything. So I get it and I do it more to, like, enhance, like, my features or whatever. But, yeah, I don't know. She's just, yeah, I feel I feel bad for her. I do. I feel sorry for her. I just think I, as an influencer, I presume she's got hundreds of thousands mm-hmm. of followers she's setting a bad example example for young females yeah i think so too and the comments were so brutal like have you read the comments no don't read them they're really sad but sad for, would she read them probably no but i just think personally especially if she's a mum, send an example <coughs> pardon me yeah and she's got lucky she's got two boys mm. not girls yep um yeah the second thing I know you want to talk about, you've tried to explain it to me, but explain it to me, the crumble cookie saga of Sydney. Oh my God. What do you know about what, from the, an outsider, what have you seen it on TikTok, right? I saw it. I Initially, I thought it was a brand in Sydney and then someone tried to rip it off in Sydney. I saw the, the lady from Fate the Label do a little TikTok about it. And then you've come out and said, it's an American brand. They went over there. They imported a thousand of these cookies and, and set up a fake Copper. crumble. Yes. yes. It, exactly that. That's exactly what happened. I've dived deeper into it. And basically, yeah, crumble is like a US sensation, like cop, uh, cookie company. Like mm-hmm. I would say it's like the Krispy Kreme of cookies. They do look amazing. And yeah, this, I think you said it was a young kid. He, they went over to America, imported a thousand cookies, sold them for seventeen fifty, branded like the boxes, everything, had a pop up in North Bondi, I think. Mm. The line was huge. I saw on TikTok and then everyone was I think one influencer spent $175 on 10 cookies. Um and they were just posting how shit they were. Um so and I think they're gonna get into a lot of trouble. Personally I think they're gonna get into a lot of trouble because they've copied the branding, everything don't know if it's illegal, but it sounds illegal. And how the hell can you get that many cookies on a plane without them breaking? I just don't get the logistics. Kind of smart if it is a kid trying to do it. And they probably didn't know it's it illegal smart. if it's a kid. But I also did the calculations because they were selling these cookies for seventeen fifty each. They rent. They hired a shop front in Bondi. They weren't making that much money. No, they weren't actually. When they had actually- to fly to America to go get these cookies. Like... 
When you did the calculations, it's not a smart idea. No. Nah. And I think they're going to get themselves into a lot of trouble. Yep. Yeah. So that was one thing we wanted to talk about. Next. Oh, uh, next. The Mendes brothers. Have you started that? Yeah, I had a nightmare after watching the first it's episode. It's so scary. So I, I don't get the point of watching something that's going to scare me. I, but I, it's a murder. Exactly. It's scary. I would rather watch something on Netflix like the show Nobody Wants Us the, with the rabbi or the foster Nobody sisters. Wants this. That. that. <laughs> I would w- rather watch that than watch something scary. Mm. But it's so, not scary though. He, they just murdered their parents. With a shotgun. Yeah, that was head. gross. So in the late 90s in LA, there was this wealthy family and I'll just give a synopsis for people. And the brothers made this plan up to go and murder their parents because their dad put a lot of pressure on them, all this. They went on a spending spree with their parents' money for a year one of the brothers confessed to his therapist because he had so much guilt. Did you get up to that bit? No, I've just read stuff. Yeah. And subsequently they got a life sentence. They, there was hung juries in both of their trials. What's that? A hung hung jury. Like the, it wasn't a definitive um, guilty or not guilty. And now Kim Kardashian. Yeah, this is wild. Kim Kardashian has, as what she does, um, trying to free those people that are... Free the innocent. These guys are not innocent. This is what I don't understand. She's saying that, in a way, they were provoked because it's coming out now. Their dad was a music producer. I didn't know that. A boy from a boy band in the 80s said their dad raped them. Oh, I didn't know that. So then... Post the boys' conviction, the boys were like, yeah, our dad used to sex- sexually assault us too. And so now everyone is saying, okay, well, they have motive. So it's not a planned murder, maybe more a manslaughter. And if that's the case, they've served their time. So they're having a – I don't necessarily know if it's a retrial, but November 29th this year. I honestly – yeah, I – yeah, I didn't understand that Kim Kardashian thing. When I saw that on TikTok, I'm like, but wait, they murdered the dad and the mom. I don't understand that. But that kind of makes more sense if he did SA the kids. I don't know. Like, that's pretty bad. Like, you would be – I mean, it's, if you would, if you were – like, I don't know. It's worth a watch. Um, I don't know. Like, because we travel to LA so much, I kind of like watching it because, like – they had like, I don't know if you saw the scene where it's like Redford Avenue, like, you know, mm. Red, it was just, it was kind of nice. But yeah, the storylines and the start is quite graphic. So Go- it just got, it's very graphic. Going back to the show I just mentioned, Nobody Wants I Us. I have that written down. Oh my. Nobody wants this. Uh, nobody wants this. Okay. I, I'm obsessed with the Foster Sisters. You are. I think they're great. I think very similar dynamic to us. They have a podcast also and they have a lot of people on the podcast talking about self-help, um, self-development and I just see similarities in us. But they're both writers, producers for TV, TV shows. This is based on the, the real life of Aaron Foster who converted to Judaism for her partner, Simon. He's not a rabbi though. But the comments about this show, especially for women – Showing a man who is securely attached in a relationship, how a healthy dynamic in a relationship works. Yeah. Old mate Seth Cohen. I'm going to call him Seth Cohen. But in the show, oh my God, what's his name in the show? Noah. Noah. Oh my God, that's such a, I should have known that. Um, But he is just so sweet in this Mm. show. And I'm just like, it was such a feel-good show on Netflix. I think I binged it in like two days. The episodes go up like 20 minutes. Um, and a few of my friends have spoken about it. I'm like, you know, it's a true story. Mm. So, yeah, I liked that. It was good. The last thing I want to talk about before we go into our juicy advice question for the week is I'm going to do a petition for you right yeah. now for you. Oh, God. Because Please send me I- help. 
I know you want someone on this podcast. Oh my God, yes. Wait, is her last name the name that we just said or is it Forster? It's either Forster or Foster. Okay, Kate Forster on TikTok. I have messaged her. I want her on the podcast. And if anyone has TikTok, you would have, and is a girl, follows fashion, you would have seen her post about the Henny cardigan. Mm Mm-hmm. I really want her on the podcast. That's all I have to say. What intrigues you so much about her? I like how honest she is. And I think some of her points are valid. But I can't say it. What do you mean? <laughs> you can say it. <coughs> we had this conversation. I know. We had this conversation with a friend last night. If you stand for everything, you stand for nothing. Yeah. You can have an opinion. Yeah, true. I'm just too scared to have an opinion on tiktok because it can be so brutal and i think i think some of the things she says i think the same thing but like i said i would never i just think she's so intriguing and i'd like to know what her children think of her tiktok sensation she's got kids yeah good like i wonder if like in the street like oh my god i saw your mom on tiktok this morning like i don't know i just find that fascinating okay don't you think it's fascinating kate this is my plea Please come on. Yeah, please come on the podcast. <laughs> but Tully's, I would love that. Do you know what? She actually te- checks her DMs every day to see if you've written back or if you've read her DM. I do. Wait, before we um, circle and finish up, I think last, not last week, the week before, we spoke about Lucy Jackson and she hadn't released the episode yet of what had happened. Yep. She's since released an episode and told the world what had happened. And can I just say that guy needs to – Scram. He is – you need to listen to it. Scram. Scram. So she actually found – go back and listen to the episode because it's like a whole thing. There's a like girlfriend one, girlfriend two, girlfriend three. Um, and she actually was checking her request. They'd gone out for dinner. She was checking her request inbox and a girl had messaged in there and then she literally told him to move out immediately. She? Oh. Oh. So it's quite like a... Kind of like the email I got. Yeah. Like imagine receiving that and your heart just sinking that he moved into her house that night. Mm. Later, bye. He's got sent out. Anyway. Good on you, Luz, for doing that. And I just have to say that too. I just think she is such a inspiration for so many women because I don't think a lot of women would have done that. They would have put up with it or just let it slide because it was a new relationship. I think a lot of women would have. Do you know how many women get cheated on and they know and they don't do anything about it? It's actually bad. So I think she's setting a really good example for women. Why do – wow, that is a great segue to my advice okay, for the great. week. Go. Okay. I'm 34 male and I found my partner's 30 – she's 30 female, hidden journal, devastated and lost. Need advice, what do I do? Last night while searching for a blanket, I stumbled upon my partner's hidden journal. Lately, she's been acting differently, so I ended up reading her recent entries. What I discovered shattered my world. She wrote about taking off her engagement ring before work and hiding it in her wallet. There's a guy to her job she's planning to try to be happy with him once our daughter starts school. I couldn't process what I read. I immediately immediately woke her up and asked for an explanation. She admitted she didn't know how to tell me, but there's a manager at her her work whom she feels a strong a stronger connection with. She said he's more financially stable and takes better care of himself than I do. They've been talking, but she insists nothing physical has happened. She's confessed she's been unhappy with me for a long time and has been thinking about moving out. But her financial situation has stopped her. Just a month ago, we were talking about having a second child and a few months back, I proposed to her. I'm completely devastated. I feel feel betrayed. And the way she described this guy makes me sick to the stomach. I'm also terrified about what this means for our daughter. I can't imagine not spending every evening and morning with her. And the thought of her being raised by someone else is unbearable. I don't know what to do. Oh my God, that's a hard one. Oh fuck. That's really like stunned me. Um, 
I don't know. It's really hard but considering there's one, like an emotional one. Yes, she's in the wrong. A hundred percent. Would you ever read your partner's journal or mobile phone? No, because I trust Damien 110%. I trust him and I don't think there's no need for me to read it. I think you only look at someone's phone or journal if you don't trust them. Which, which shows is, there's something wrong with the relationship. Absolutely. you're They're either unfaithful or I think there's two things. It's like people obviously can physically cheat, but there's also emotional twi- cheating. Mm. And I think what she's doing is emotional cheating, which is not okay. Mm. Um, but it's also hard because there's a child involved. She hasn't actually cheated, but she kind of has emotionally cheated. It's like, that's the start. It's like, when does it go too far to the next step? But he's basically saying she's only with him because, because financially she can't move out and that yeah. she's not happy. I'm like, I'm kind of like, mate, have a bit more self respect Lucy, like Lucy, have a yeah. bit more self-respect for yourself. Yeah, fair. Well, she's basically saying she doesn't love you anymore. Exactly. Without saying it. And you can't make someone like you or love you. Okay, well, when you say it like that, then maybe leave. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like I said, it's so hard when you've got a kid involved, but she is basically saying that she doesn't love you anymore. But he's putting the kid's happiness above his own. Yeah, and I kind of get that. But then... As I you- know, I know. It's not the right thing, but I get it. But we'll say that kid, that kid's not going to be happy if the dad's not happy. Yeah, true. Okay, I think he needs to leave. Scram, go out the door. Scram, you're leaving too, mate. Bye. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that's it. Oh my God, thank God we got through that episode. I'm like really need to do a massive cough. (laughs) I'm, you're a weapon. All right, guys, guys. don't forget to like, subscribe. And share with all your friends. Bye. Bye.